You were the first guest on this podcast. We're celebrating year two. Yay. And you're going to be the first guest on season, on year two, not season two. We're on like season five, I think now. But thank you for coming back. And I'm so glad that we were able to like be in person this time. Are you an RV person or are you just RV life curious? Wondering how people live in a tiny space with their family 24 seven. Either way, this is a podcast for you. My name is Kate White and I travel full time with my family and two kids and the dog in an RV. Every week I sit down either with a fellow RV woman to discuss why she chose RV life and how she has changed on the road or with a special guest who speaks on a topic relevant to travel life. Pull a chair up to the fire and let's chat. I'm coming at you in full RV mode today. Well, that- because we had to move sites yeah. and uh, sorry, because it's going to rain mm. and we were in the swamp mm. and everyone was telling us it was going to yeah. flood. So yeah. it was cool. Mm. Yeah. I'm glad that you're here. Well, I am too. New spot. Yeah. For yeah. a week. You know, that'll be fine. Yeah. That's good. What have you been doing? Yeah. Sitting by the pool? Yeah, but I just got back from my own solo trip. Yes. So I took the van off by myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was going to say that's a brilliant move mm -hmm. because uh, for the listeners to know, we are in the middle of a month of full-time families. A hundred families at the same campground. Yeah. And you made a brilliant move of going off on your own for a few days. Yeah, our therapist, we just had this meeting. I was like, listen, I need some space. Like, I need to be in my own energy for a while. I love you. Mm -hmm. Bless you. You're my partner of 18 years. Love you. Um, But I need some time away. And so our therapist is like, this sounds like a fantastic idea. I'm like, yes, thank you. Yeah. uh, So yeah, one month I'm going to go off. And then the next month, Kyle's going to go off. And then the next month. So we're going to flip-flop each month. I don't know how much he's going to love it. But oh, really? He's yeah. not as into being by himself. No, he. I love him. He loves me Velcro, so he's like sucked oh, in. Yeah, right. like, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and, and I need like space occasionally mm-hmm. to breathe. Yeah, same. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's surprisingly similar to me and my husband. Yeah. We, there was a time, actually, before RV life, where we would schedule in evenings away mm-hmm. for each other, mm-hmm. and I was like, yes. I'm like making a list what I'm going to do. I yeah. have ideas. I was like looking forward to it. And she was like, I don't know. I think I should just stay here. You know, he would always like, he would like start to make excuses. And I'm like, this is the reason yeah. that you need some time. Yeah. Because you need to be independent. You need to go live and do things on your own. Like right. I can't, I did a boondockers welcome by myself. I was in the you middle did. of Seminole Heights in Tampa and yeah. uh, in some stranger's front yard. And yeah. that's where I slept for the night. Okay. So then what do you do? What well, do do so this trip own? was different because it was more of a work trip. And so wow. I needed to get my tattoo touched up because I just got it all redone. And so it needed to get touched up. amazing. Are you happy with it? So much happier. Okay. Good. Yeah. My ego had to die um, <laughs> with the first rendition of it. Yeah. But so I'm in this trip. I'm on this trip and then I get my tattoo touched up. And then the next day I have my first like national news interview on my own merit and my own oh my um, gosh. content. Stuff. So yeah, like I got to. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah, job. that's so exciting. Yeah, that's what I How was many doing. TV shows have you been on in the past? There's been a what, lot. Six month, year, mm-hmm. something. There's been a lot. Are you like? Have you hired like a PR? We person? have. Yeah. So I have a PR Great. person now. Nice. We're focusing more on like speaking engagements. You know, where I was editing the videos for a while and like running all of our social media. But I want to be an author, and I'm halfway through my book, and I need to finish writing it, yeah. and I want to be. That's going. Yeah, a public speaker and like all these things. So I'm going to be going off a lot more on my own. Don't know how much Kyle's going to love that. Yeah. But you know, I'm, we're transitioning roles of, I'm kind of going to be the breadwinner while he's working on his vlogs to get his vlogs going. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting dynamic because we had this dynamic before we launched. Oh, I was the breadwinner of my salon and he stayed at home. He did the puppy uh-huh. salon. So we'll see how this next season and choices in this next cycle coming up are going to be. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What Do you want to tell us what your book's about or do you want it to be a surprise? Um. Well, I mean, you know, over the past four years, I have, I have PTSD. And so getting into the bus and going out into nature... Quickly, we lost our son in a car accident back in 2011. And so being on the road is not a fun thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I've had to really grow through that because I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to be in one spot. And so for the past four years, I have turned to three things that have really helped me find clarity in the moment. And these three things take like 60 seconds each to do. And they're things that people can mm-hmm. do. They're free. 
you know, anybody can do them. And so that's, my book is going to be talking about my story of birth to now and where I've been and then go into these, uh, these tips. It's called Highway to Happy. And uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, merging into your purpose. I feel like I'm going to need a very big box of Kleenex to read that book. You might. That's you like, might. it's going to be a lot in it. I, I almost can't even ask you questions about that topic because I can feel myself like I would cry. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's just very, yeah. it's a lot of intense things yeah. that you've been through. Yeah. So I'm really get- excited about it. There was one book on my mind for a couple of years. And now this is not the same book that I had for originally thought of. I'm still going to write that first book, but this one needs to come first. Mm-hmm. And so I've always wanted to be a writer ever since I was a kid. Like for everybody's birthday, I would write poems. And so I would oh. give them like a framed poem for their birthday. It's like yeah. this customized poem to them. Um, my grandfather, that's mm-hmm. the most memorable. He was turning 69. And you know, as a child, you don't yeah. really know the connotations of yeah. that. <laughs> and I was like, 69, 69, 69. That age is just fine. <laughs> still remember it? Yeah. Yes. Is he still around? No, he passed away. Um, this should be 20 years ago. He uh, he passed Did away. You, does your family still tease you about that? Oh, always. Like, they <laughs> tease me about stuff. But it's all in good fun. So. That is the best. A lot that has changed over the past year. Because mm. I talked to you mm-hmm. about a year ago. Mm-hmm. You were the first guest on this podcast. We're celebrating year two. Yay! And you're going to be the first guest on se- on year two, not season two. We're on like season five, I think now. But thank you for coming back. And I'm so glad that we were able to like be in person this time. Last time we talked, like you guys, I think just got the van. Yeah. For the little vacation. Yeah. You've gone through like a couple quasi rebrands, you know. What else? Just, it's oh, literally, last, that's yeah. why we changed our name to Being Bethunes. Because that's all, we're just Being Bethunes. That, that's what we do. Our life is chaos. We can't explain it. We don't know how to explain it. But we operate so beautifully in all the just wildness. And I mean, we got a new bus. Yeah. So we got a new bus. It's in Arizona. We've got to get out there to start remodeling it. So we've got her. We also have our current bus. Then Wait, we have our are, van. Are you going to be remodeling it yourself? Yes. So we weren't going to. Oh. Yeah. We our buddy, well, he's gonna remodel it with us, but okay. our buddy remodels buses. And yeah. so he did the final remodel on our current bus that okay. we have. And I loved it. And I was like, listen, how great would it be? Hear me out, babe, to just drop the bus off yeah. and Michael do it all. And then yeah. we just pick it up. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is great. Wonderful idea. Then the idea actually sets in. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, you know, I kind of want to put my hands on it and help build it. So now oh. we're going out to Arizona okay. to help build our bus. Are you like making a beeline there after this? Kind of. I mean, we don't know where we're stopping. Like we definitely want to stop in Louisiana. We love Creole, Louisiana food. And then we don't know. We'll okay. just stop wherever we feel like stopping. Okay. And we don't know how long it's going to take. So you don't have like a, yeah. the bus has to get out of the guy's, you know, no. parking no. thing for no. a certain date. We just have to get there. Okay. Then the usual craziness, like we're gutting yeah. the entire thing, you know, totally. Do fine. you think your kids will want to be a part? Like, are they kind of like construction-y, hands-on? Our oldest and our youngest, they will absolutely be in there like hammering and doing all the things. Molly, our middle, she will want to have her hand in designing stuff. So they're all going to be like a part of something in it. She is the she said that uh, one. I love whenever that. you feature her in some of your little videos, oh, it just makes <laughs> my heart so happy. Well, because we ask the kids, you know, before we go into filming something, we say, hey, do you want to do this? We explain the concept. And if it's a yes, okay, cool. Um, if it's a no, then we don't film them. Yeah. Um, it's like Eli, he had his birthday in February. Mm-hmm. I asked him, hey, can I make a post about your birthday? He said, no, I would rather you not. So I didn't make any post on any of my social media about his birthday because he asked me not to. Mm-hmm. Do you ever have family members that are like asking you questions about your content? Or is it like just not even on their radar? And I have a selfish reason for asking, but please give me your, your answer first. We don't even listen to opinions. So they know not to give them to us. Yeah. Like it's just that kind yeah. of thing where families like they're not going to listen anyway. So yeah. I'm not going to bother and try and deal. It took a couple of years to get them there because we just kept making our own choices. Right. Mm-hmm. And they kept like, why aren't you listening? Well, because we're our own people. So yeah. now they just, where are you going? Okay, cool. Have fun. See you on the flip. Yep. You know, like I use, let's say Instagram, for example, mm-hmm. as a tool. Yeah. For business. Mm-hmm. 
bless Instagram's <laughs> and heart. To do things that I love mm-hmm. and to build community. But then there's like part of me that's like, wait, Instagram came out when I was in college and I used it to like share photos of my life. And I, there's still part of me that's like, it feels like that's, I should be like sharing more photos because family. Yeah, if they really want to know, just say, hey, can you send me a picture of what's going on with you? Well, that's the problem. My mom said, uh, we actually bought my mom one of those frames that's like, uh, you can send send the pictures. And I'm like, this is a great idea. It's perfect. You know how many times I've sent her pictures? Like three? I think maybe two. And it was for Mother's Day last year. And I'm always like, oh, shoot, I need to upload pictures to that thing. But then, you know, it's like, yeah, the pizza's burning and the mm-hmm. kids need the thing. Life. And the, the black tank is full. I don't know. Whatever. All and, the things. And then I feel guilt. So I'm always working through that one. Well, I think you're doing the best you can with what you have. Right. And Thank so you. if you're doing your best, then that's what matters. And if you can get to sending pictures and you send pictures, yeah. if you can't get to sending pictures, you send good vibes and say, Hey, I love you, but I'll yeah. get to it when I can. And I will definitely send you a birthday gift. Yeah. Yeah. You'll and get around to it. I'll give you hugs when I see you. And that is enough. I appreciate that. Yeah. Just be you, Kate. It helps me. I try, but I just have a guilt thing. Guilt you is know. hard. Guilt yeah. is one of those emotions that you it's like a visceral emotion that really sucks. Yeah. But that guilt is not yours to carry. If they are triggered by you or by not sending pictures, that's theirs to carry. They have to figure that out. You know, I look at myself as I'm either a trigger or a glimmer. It has everything to do with them individually and nothing to do with me personally Mm -hmm. is being triggered by me because Mm -hmm. that's something they've got to work through. You having guilt, you just have to trace back where that comes from. Accept it recognize it and then let it go. Yes. Do your best what you can. The interesting part of it is like my parents are so laid back. I'm not sure they even care. Yeah. But somehow okay. I have this like perfectionism that's like, oh, like, oh my gosh, I have to send my parents mm-hmm. pictures and I have to, I have to make sure everyone's happy before I'm happy. AKA codependency mm-hmm. of like, I can't be happy till they're happy. Girl, uh, I didn't yeah. know we were going to get right. to a you know, you never know. Dash. You never know what you get. Yeah. Yes. I, me and Drew talk about this a lot. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, right. There it is. Guilt. That's it. Here we are. It's Instagram. <laughs> Way to go. Instagram's great for certain things. Topic. But I do not know how I got on that topic. I'm sweating now. I uh, it's can you yell too? Like, it's hard. It's one of those heavy, <laughs> those heavy emotions are hard to carry. And you don't want to look at it. Like you don't want to look at that emotion. You don't want to explore why it's there. But when we take that deep dive into our shadow of that emotion, we can finally let it go and we can start living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is this like a topic that you think about and write about a lot? Because this is just like flowing out of you. This is just me. So articulate. Yeah. I, emotions are kind of my thing. I've, okay. With my PTSD, it has been such a blessing because it has given me this ability to get to know my emotions and my body and my own energy and like really honor myself Mm -hmm. and realize, okay, I'm being pushed too far here. I'm going to pull back. It's like last night, someone asked us to come out to a fire and I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm really tired. I just got back from a girl's trip. You guys have fun. I'll catch you later. And they kind of kept going. And I was like, Hey, it's okay that I want to want to go. I'm good where I'm at. You go do you Mm -hmm. and, and we'll meet up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm okay. Like this new autonomous gen, this saying no gen feels so good. So good. Yeah. Did you not used to be this way? No, I was a, I'm a recovering people pleaser. Oh, yes. Yeah. High yeah. five. Yeah. Me too. Trying to make everybody uh, happy and all the things and felt like yeah. I was responsible for everybody else's happiness. Yeah. See, that's yeah. what I'm just yeah. saying. The only person's happiness I'm responsible for is mine. Mm-hmm. So speaking of that, remember how I said we had to move today? Mm-hmm. March Madness. Is, this is the first day of March Madness. Huh? My husband, Drew, is obsessed with March Madness okay. and all, like has been ever since I know, have known him. His favorite team plays at 1.30 today. This morning, we're like, okay, when are we going to move? We have to yada, 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 talking about all the things of the day. Mm-hmm. And he said, I don't want to move unless it's before 12.30 because I really want to watch Creighton play in March Madness. And I was like, okay, yeah. we can do that. So I am a stress bombing everyone between like 11.45 and 12.30. And I turn into 
a Kate NATO, mm-hmm. <laughs> as we say. Mm-hmm. And I'm not proud of it. But I was like, you guys, come on, we have to get out of here by 1230, like militant. Blah, 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 blah. And when I took a second to reflect, thanks to my husband, <laughs> uh, he's like, why are you stressed out? Like no one is pressuring anyone here. I was like, mm-hmm. it's because I want you to be happy. It's because I want you to be able to make your 130 show or what are it's called little sports, little sport game sports balls <laughs> i want you to watch your sports balls and be happy and i am stressing my brains out to make sure that it happens. you're happy yeah what isn't that exhausting yes mm-hmm. it doesn't happen a lot to me but every once in a while i'm like what just happened why am i in this crazy mode of I can't be at rest until everyone else is happy. Yeah. It's a good little reset though. Cause you recognize it and you're like, right. oh, wait a second. Hang on. Let's pump the brakes. Pump yeah. the brakes. Let's stop the t- the Kate NATO mm-hmm. for a second. Mm-hmm. And it gives you that. Then when it happens again, you think back to that and you're like, oh yeah, I got this. Yes. Don't yeah. stress. And I will say like from the beginning of our marriage to now, and we've been married 12 and a half ish years or so my recovery time is like a lot quicker now. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, oh, mm-hmm. recognize it. Okay, chill. I don't yeah. have to be like that anymore. I remember when we were first married, I would like have to journal and have me time Hold for on. like hours. And it was like, what is going on with me? Why am I like this? Here we are. Yeah. All, growth. all the things, growth. all the growth, <laughs> all the amazing growth. Cause like great marriages <laughs> don't, oh, the bulk in my bro. Um, oh, no, that happened to me the other day, except it was down my pants. Oh, I was at a campfire and literally down the They're back. Getting of frisky. Pants. The bugs are getting frisky. Dude, I was crazy around here. Something else I want to talk to you All right. about. This is like a way different topic. Open book. It's we're good. <laughs> Picnic conversations here. <laughs> Picnic table sessions from the purple clams. <laughs> it seems like you go to a lot of events like schoolie, McSchoolerson, whatever it's called. Yeah, What's yeah. It called? Schoolie UP. Or a schoolie swarm. There's, yeah, there's a bunch swarm. of there's a bunch of things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just spent a month in Madison, Florida with full time families organization. Yeah. All kinds of shenanigans. Yeah. Plus, you've been in R V life for years. Yeah. What are some of like your favorite organization like meetup type organizations that you're involved with? So we, I mean, we love full-time families, right? Because every organization that we're in is a different dynamic. They're different people. We're kind of the people that flutter. We flutter all around. We, mm-hmm. we don't have a set group that we stay in. So we know people from all places. And so like we've been to purely van life events where it's like people in their 20s out in Bend, Oregon, where all the things are legal and it's a great time. And then, you know, we've been to events with schooly people where you're out boondocking in the wilderness somewhere. And then we go to full-time events where, you know, you're in campgrounds and hanging out. So it really just depends on the event. We talk to the kids about it and see where they want to go and where their friends are going to be. And then we just fly by the seat of our pants. Usually we're coming into events last minute. This one we planned out though. And the yeah, balloon you, fiesta were planned out. This one is, yeah. you got to be on the list. It's, it's a lot. This one is a lot. Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is the balloon fiesta, you're, wait, that's in October? Yeah. We, and I know. It's, I know. We bought March? Kyle wanted to, he loved it. We went a couple years ago and like it was soul changing for him. And so, yes, when the tickets went, he got to fly in a hot air balloon. So he was just very happy. And when the tickets went on sale, he was like, um, yeah, oh, we're going. So that's where we'll be in October. What End of September, it, October. It, what all does that entail? It, like, do you, I've heard people have to get up at like super early in the morning. Oh, it's a whole production. And there's a lot of orange dust. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it is over 600 hot air balloons are lifted into the air. Um, at one time, well, in stages, but it's the largest hot air balloon fest- festival in the world. Is it like every day? Yeah. So they have it for a week long. It's actually maybe 10 days, 10 days because we're media, we get media passes and yeah. we get to sign up to go for rides. And so Kyle actually, we signed up and he got picked and he got to ride the sloth and he got to ride in the sloth hot air okay. balloon. And yeah, so it was life changing for him. And so, yeah, we're going back. That's okay. the one thing I is, have booked. Is he going to try to like, fly one this year um like level up or i don't think does he just want to ride it right again i think the kids want a crew and so you can sign up to be a crew for some of these people and so maybe the kids are going to crew but i said if only one of us gets to go in the media this year (laughs) not sitting out another i sat out that year because it they called kyle and i was like this is your dream so i'm gonna let you have this one 
And now it's your dream. Yeah, so I'm like, I would, I would like to go up in the hot air balloon. Thanks. <laughs> I'm on the fence about it, man. I, it's nerve wracking, right? Because yeah. you're up really, really high. There, yeah. There's nothing saving you, okay? Yeah. There's a lot of hot air balloon accidents. So here's what I'm thinking. If I don't go up, we're putting a deck on the new bus on the roof. And so I'm going to have my own rooftop deck that I could just watch the balloons go by. That's Is this on the new bus or this one? New bus. Yeah. Okay. That's brilliant because it's like an extra room. Yeah. And it has more privacy than just you your know, area like this. Yeah. And the hot air balloons fly right over your rig. And we looked out of our window and there's a hot air balloon coming right up over our bus. Yeah. Yeah. As we're sleeping. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Normal, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I could get it into pretty it, awesome. except not the boondocking part. We're not quite... Okay, it's not, not that, that bad. Yet. They have a water truck that comes around and fills your water. They have a dump oh. thing, or dump truck that comes and dumps your tanks and stuff. Okay. So it's, it's not... It's easy, but boondocking. It's very light. It's diet boondocking. Diet Yeah, it's the diet yes. Good introductory diet boondocking. Diet BD. Yeah, it's the diet BD. Here's our, our excuse for not boondocking. Mm-hmm. Our inverter does not invert. Okay. Or... What is it supposed to do? Charge things? Yeah, it's supposed to convert the power. Convert. Yeah. 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 Um, so that means our refrigerator will go dead. Mm. Um, and, you know, we can last like a day, but then all your stuff starts to spoil yeah. when the fridge yeah. gets hot. So some people that start out. Excuse. Yeah. We recommend just getting like one battery, having one panel just to charge your fridge. So mm-hmm. that way you at least know that your fridge is going to not be spoiled. Yes. So there's that, you know, it's an option. We do have one. Yeah. It's just the inverter is not yes. inverting as it should. So that's like slight, slightly problematic. Oh boy. Let's not get into the topic of no RV issue. No. It's for another podcast. Yeah, that's not that's for not this one. No, no. Another topic I want to touch on. Okay. Do you guys still have your community of the Bethunies? We do. Yeah. I actually just really completely changed it. And made it free. Yeah, we're no longer charging because I felt like I want this to be a community of people and not just exclude people. You know, Mm -hmm. so the only thing they need is to sign up with an email and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then it relieves pressure from me for not being able to create extra content. I create it when I can you know, and I message when I can, I do the things I can with it, but it takes that pressure off of me because I don't want to make my money from my family. I don't want to make it from my people. And that's kind of what I felt like we were doing. And it, for me, it was, it didn't feel aligned, but for other Mm -hmm. people, you know, you content creation is hard and you need to get paid for what you do. And if that's Mm -hmm. how you feel aligned to have that community, then 1 million percent, yes, Mm -hmm. charge for it. So do you, is it like weekly online hangouts or what all is included with your... We're revamping it to look different because Mm -hmm. it it was, we were doing like weekly live streams and trying to put more content and every day trying to put content there, but it burnt us out. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like fulfilling anymore. Mm -hmm. And the people we realized that were paying the money just wanted to support us. They didn't even care about the extra content. They just wanted to send us the extra money every month. Um, And so it kind of became, well, let's make it free and accessible Mm -hmm. to everybody just with an email address and we can all share in the love there. Nice. So that's what it's turning into. So I don't know what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to put in there. I'll put in what I can, when I can. An extension of being Bethune's. Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone can be a Bethune. Yeah. Seriously, that was my, that's my motto is I want everybody to to, just come be a Bethune. You guys have a whole Hmm. chill vibe and I could see why people would be like, yeah, I want to sign up to be in that family. Yeah. Will you adopt me? Right. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. We'll pull a big trailer behind us. Yeah. We already have four Uh, vehicles. What's one more? You have four? We have a Jeep. We have the two buses and then the van. Yeah, because we apparently like wheels. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. When people tell you that they want to live a life like yours, Mm. like, I want to renovate an old Mm. vintage bus and be nomadic Mm -hmm. and also be parents and be creative. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people? I tell them to go rent an RV for a week and bring your kids and your dogs and your life into that RV (laughs) and then see how much you think you can do it after that. Mm-hmm. Because it's not easy. No. It's it's a beautiful life. It's a hard life. Mm-hmm. It can transform you in ways that you never ever thought were imaginable. Mm-hmm. But it's not for the faint of heart. Ditto that. Yeah, I always think that mm-hmm. because I think no bad life gets 
glamorize very yes. easily because there are very glamorous parts of it. Mm-hmm. I think the feeling of awe that you get, like Florida sunset, for example, yeah. I've seen a lot of those and it's winter and I haven't had to deal with snow and it's been yeah. great. And there's a lot of gratitude that comes, you know, oh, whenever yeah. you are in that, like when you're in nature and you have the sense of awe, but then there's a lot of other practical, logistical shenanigans that come along. Oh, for sure. That don't get talked about a lot. Like being on the road and being on the side of I-10 while Kyla has to go replace a brake line underneath the bus while there's semi-truck zooming by, you know? Those sort of things that... uh, Is I-10 the crazy one? Oh, yeah. Any of them are crazy, but that one, it was right outside of L.A., Oh, yeah, it was that great. one. Yeah, he oh, had to. We had to pull off. It was right outside of it. Yeah, how long did that take? Um, so we have air brakes, and so sometimes it took us a couple years to get through all the old airlines. So we were like blowing airlines left and right. And um, I don't know what that means. So air brakes, they have these hoses that power the brakes through air. Okay. And so they're very different than than regular brakes. But what he has to do is he has to cut that piece out of hose, rubber hose. Go take it to Napa Auto Parts, find a Napa. Then he has to have them make a new hose with the clampy mabobber doodles and then go put it back on to the bus. Oh my God. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That so yeah, good. rent the RV first. Uh, absolutely rent the RV before yeah. you decide that this is a good life choice for you. Cram everyone in mm-hmm. there. We did it for a weekend and it was like so relaxing and wonderful. I don't regret our choice. I just wish we would have been I wish we would have done one of those like training things Mm -hmm. about like learn what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this is the same for buses, but for our RV, like the seals, Mm -hmm. um, sealant, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think because water gets in. Right. And like literally you, you have to keep an eye on that or else it's like Mm -hmm. um, your floor is molding. Yeah. And then you have to like replace the whole thing. And it's so. It's one of those, it just becomes part of, excuse me, your like weekly your everyday. like life stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got to go on the roof and make sure the blah, blah, blah sealant thing is, isn't like bubbling up and bursting. But it's like mowing the lawn at yeah. a regular house, right? right. Exactly. You have to mow There's the lawn. There's something. Yeah. Yeah. It's chores. Maintenance. Chores. Yeah. We built a life around travel, right? We love yeah. to travel. And so we built our life around that. So we still budget. We still have to do normal things that traditional homes do. Mm-hmm. It just looks a little different because we're on wheels. Yes. Don't you kind of hate the word chores? Do you know what I call it? Such a negative When we have to clean the bus, that. I what call it say? nurturing our home. Yes. That's what we started calling it. Great term for it. So every Sunday we nurture our home because Mm -hmm. our home needs our love. It needs our attention. And so instead of saying chores, our home needs nurturing. Yeah. We started, I don't even remember where this came from, but for the kids, we call it like family economy. It's a little bit sterile, but it's like, instead of having like a chore chart, it's Mm -hmm. like, you're helping the yeah. family economy. Yeah. My husband's very into like, you know, finance. Stuff. I mean, I would see that coming from Drew. Yeah. Uh, I don't see you naming like, it family yeah. economy. All right, I'll go with it. I'll make, I'll make the, the family economy sheet artsy. <laughs> we'll have glitter. Yeah. So that's my role. It's like, I will create it. Yeah. Every, I'll make it every you. week for you. Family economy. We're going to workshop <laughs> that one a little bit. Uh, family economy. Yeah. I like yours better. Mm. I think maybe we should go with that. Nurturing the home. Yeah, it just sounds And it is a home. Loving and sweet. Right. It's like you're watering the flowers. Absolutely. We're loving it into life. Yeah. Loving it into life. I love that. It's giving me life. (laughs) You got to speak to the RV just like you would speak to the plants. Like, this seal will stay this time. Because here's the thing. That inner dialogue, I'm telling you, no matter who you speak to... (laughs) The way that people speak to others, you can tell so much about their internal dialogue mm-hmm. and how they speak to themselves. Mm-hmm. So like when I've really tried to change my mindset on that and like mm-hmm. really be cognizant of how I'm speaking, the words that I'm yep. saying to myself, because if I say mean, nasty words to myself and I'm blame, shame, criticizing, critical, I'm not going to speak to people in the same nice right. way. Right. And even an animate object such yes. as an RV, yes. if you're sitting there like, cursing the thing every time it has an issue, which is mm-hmm. almost daily for us. Yeah. It's like, you're not acknowledging that 
life is working for you. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that we're learning these lessons. Yes. What is it? There's some gems here. Mm-hmm. We got to get this out until we're saying, you know what, RV? This time, this is going to work. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We're going to get through it. It's cool. It's fine. <laughs> There's a reason we're going through this. Uh, we'll find it. That's Usually you have to pause. You've got to pause and reflect on what's of going them. on. Just like I had to earlier today. It's like, Why am I so angry right now? Right? I hate know. NATO. I do like that though. I can see you just... You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I've also called like the beehive. Ooh, just, yeah. Like, my mind just like thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like after you drink yerba mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. I did that in the van. So bless the yerba mate's little heart. I <laughs> go in this gas station in Washington and we're traveling with our friends, Judd and Sandy, and we're staying in the van for 11 and a half weeks. And we get to this store and we're exhausted. We can't find a place to stay. We're up in the Cascade Mountain Range. And finally we come down and find this little service station. I'm like, ooh, what is Yerba Mate? What is this Yerba Mate? (laughs) And so I take it and I'm like, I'm going to try it. It looks good. So it tasted interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like so jittery. And I, I, we pull off and get up to our friends. And I was like, what is this stuff? And my friend goes, Yerba Mate, you drank that? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, that is loaded with caffeine. So I was like, just like, wrecked for the rest of the day. Do you not usually drink caffeine? I drink one cup of coffee a day. Okay, nice. Yeah. Good regulation. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still on like a two to three cup a day regimen. I've heard that one cup doesn't change your body structure or your mood or anything like that. It doesn't mm-hmm. hurt you. One cup doesn't hurt you. Mm-hmm. But I think when you go above, like you're, you know, because yeah. when I used to work a traditional life or work in the traditional life, I had a coffee pot in my grooming salon. And so as a groomer, I'm working 10 hours. Like yes. I'm once an hour, I'm drinking another cup of coffee. And so it like burnt me out. It wore out my adrenals. Like it just kind of really yeah. messes you up. Oh yeah, man. I remember being like, when I was still working in an office, it was like at least two cups of coffee a day and yeah. then maybe like two Diet Cokes. Yeah. And it was just like, by the end of the day, I'm like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, my body's had no water Strapped at down. the end of the day. I'm like, yeah. coffee, yeah. not enough. Not enough. Uh, the dehydrating type of water. Uh, <laughs> so now I just carry my happy little boho uh, nice. thing with me. So I have water all the time. I love it. Okay, so at this event, they gave us those... Um, welcome bags mm-hmm. with the tea chino. Oh, Did I didn't you taste it. I didn't even look in the welcome bag. It's, it's so bad. Good. You like the taste of coffee. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. I, any of those like non coffee like uh, type things where it's, I don't even know, made of like chicory root or whatever. Mushroom Have coffee. You taste those? I actually, but is it still coffee beans? I mean, and there it is has, like the adaptogen yeah. and stuff in it. Yeah. So it's still, there's still coffee in there. There's still caffeine, but it's not as much. And it's more along the lines of using the mushroom for yes. the natural energy yeah. rather than the coffee. Okay. And I actually like that. I'm into that. Ticino has, some of them have like the mushroom adaptogens, oh. like whatever that stuff is called. Okay. But then it like legit tastes like coffee. I'm not trying to like. So I need to go in my welcome bag and find this. Because I think my yeah. welcome bag is under the bed. And I haven't yeah. opened it up. So oh, I your probably- kids haven't like rummaged through it because just... mine did immediately. Oh, well, and yeah. I was like, take all the stickers, give me that coffee thing. Teach you Yeah. Throw the candy away. <laughs> we don't need the candy. Try it. Mm, all right. Let me know what you think. Right, I will. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go back and I'm going to open my Ticino and make myself a, I hope you like it now that I talked it out. I probably will. I'm a pretty easy to please pretty kind of gal. Sure it's like, I think it's an herbal tea that somehow they flavor with like coffee oh. because that was, if you read the little bio oh. of the woman, okay. she's like, you know, I didn't want the caffeine. She had some sensitivities and stuff, okay. the acid in her stomach. And then she, but she loved the flavor of coffee. Let I me know what you it. think. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. the idea. I have to tell you. Um, so I remember when you were beginning this podcast, like it was an in the infancy yeah. at like RV creating yet. And I am oh, just yeah. back in uh, Camp Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I just want to tell you, I'm so proud of you and how far you've come. I did RV Creating It Again and Leah from Llama Llama Adventure. Mm -hmm. I love you, Leah. I love you. Just so many people are in your group that were at RV Creating. Your, um, what did you remember? The the group that I missed this time. Yeah, yeah, I have to get better at punctuality and remembering things. Sorry. Find find more balance in it. It's always next time. 
but I'm just, I'm so proud of how far you've come. You've, you've just, you've killed it. You've done so freaking amazing. And I'm just so proud of you. I was telling Drew this the other day. It's the first time I've had like an endeavor. Like I've started little businesses and all that kind of stuff. And in the past, I've always had such like an attachment. It was like a neediness. Like Mm -hmm. I have to make this business work because of yeah. I'm just so passionate about it. And like, I don't know, there was just like a, the energy was always not quite right. One for the right reason. And yeah. Something, I don't know. I can't, still working on that one. Um, need a journal like three hours longer. Right. right? That way, Maybe you know, I'll get there. You got a process. But um, this is the first thing that I'm just like, it's just like pure joy for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I just love it. And it's fun. For example, like podcast sponsors. I do reach out to brands for sponsorships, mm-hmm. but it's like, I don't have this freaked out neediness no. with it. I'm just like, yeah, we'll see if they do it. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun to partner with them, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I wish I could like say some brand names that I'm like working on partnerships with because <laughs> that'll be fun. Um, but I'll let you know when that happens. But it, but it's like, I just have this lighthearted, happy detachment. I love to that. It. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> like super fun for me. So. Well, I have to tell you, your group absolutely affects everyone in it in such a beautiful way. Like the way that they speak about it and how empowered they are. And just like, Leo was telling me there was one group that like was, okay, we're, this group has ended and then you kept it going because the girls yeah. just loved it so yeah. much. And I think it's just such a testament to who you are as a person and your soul and your beauty. Like you have all of these women that you have gathered around you that are just beautiful and incredible like you are. Thank so, you. Yeah. You're good, kid. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think I'm lucky because like the RV community, there's just so many good people. Like mm-hmm. we're, it's fascinating because there's all types of people here, yeah. like super conservative, very liberal and like literally everything in between, Every. like vegans, meat eaters, mm-hmm. everything in between. Mm-hmm. But at the core, like we all really value freedom. Mm-hmm. And we, I think there's like this common thread of like, questioners yeah like we don't want the you know, traditional american life like there's some disillusionment there that we're like why are we living like that you know and it's created like a, it creates kind of like an instant bond yeah and with the women in rv queens it's like man these ladies are they're looking for community and they're just like instantly vulnerable like oh my gosh friends we're the same right yeah 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 let's go i love that you've done that because i i know it helps women more than anything to have to feel empowered because in this Mm -hmm. day and age women tear women down a lot Mm -hmm. and a lot of the comments that i get that are negative and hateful are from women oh yeah but i get a lot of great ones however the ones that are the nastiest the ones that attack my appearance and who i am and like try to really cut me down are from women hmm And then you work your gen magic. Yep. And then I'm just like, bless your heart. You're like, I'm sorry, you're hurting. Yep. You know, bless you. Yep. I wish you well on your healing journey. Yeah. Because that's all I can do. You know, I got one yesterday about my service dog. And so um, they're like, oh, that's not a real service dog. And I really wanted to type out (laughs) something that I can't say on this podcast. (laughs) And... I just took a breath. I took a beat, did one of those tips of mine. Yes. And then I just hit the care button. I didn't respond. I just hit care because I know that that person making that comment has no idea who I am, has no idea about my struggles. Obviously, if they're going to comment in a very judgmental way about somebody else who is having a struggle, they're internally so broken and beaten up and Mm -hmm. just exhausted. So then I have empathy for them. And I'm like, yeah, I just going to send you some love and vibes, Sheila. Bless your heart. Like I just... Karen. Yeah. Deborah. And if you sat and you're listening, I love you. I, I love you and you're amazing. Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. yeah. I have a lot of friends named Jennifer. Yeah. Not very much. Me. Uh, I don't have any Sheilas in my friend repertoire yet. No. Yeah. Maybe I will find one. I've got a couple, but I don't mean, I don't mean those Sheilas. <laughs> the other Sheilas. Those other Sheilas. Other Sheilas. Oh my gosh. I have talked with you too long. Actually, we're over time. Oh my gosh. Can you believe it? I mean, it happens. And my computer's about today. It's the um, universe. It is plugged in. Oh, it's not plugged in. It stayed on for just long enough. I'm a professional. Bink. There we go. Yay. Thank you for coming over today and having a picnic table session with me. Thank you for having me. I love this. 
very warm purple clam. I love I love the breeze. And coming. there is yeah, a fan. A professional fan. Which also <laughs> matches the black decor. Like I just I love the branding here. I mean this the is, dinosaur, this the is dinosaur map. Insert a Hollywood word that means high fashion and glamorous. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Absolutely, yeah. we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And I will see you on the road. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're out there. Of you course. Know. Yes. Us too. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode and for being my favorite part of RV life. If you could please like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on, that would be awesome. And listen, if you want to have conversations like I had on this episode with your fellow RV women, head to rvqueenspodcast.com slash community and choose your RV queen circle today. All right, guys, I'll see you next week or hopefully I will see you on the road. Why am I like this?